Welcome to the IG. My name is Mackie Hall, and lately I've developed a thing for isometric art. Why? Because it's a great way to get personality out of something logical or structured. Think technology, think computers, think gaming. As you can see, a great starting point with isometric design and a really cool way to make a logo is to start with a single letter. All you need to do is know how to play with the transform window, a couple of measurements, and how to use the shape builder tool. And in the process, we're going to teach you how to take a simple M and level it up. Follow the steps, and this is your jumping point to impress really easily and really quickly. Once you know this, take it as far as you need. If you need any inspiration, check the end for examples. Beyond that, let's go. All right, first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, a single artboard, and if we scroll down, we're going to be using the RGB color mode. In this instance, we're just going to screen. All right, before we get started, I want to mention that we're using the Essentials Classic Workspace. In order to switch to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go to the top right-hand corner, click, and select Essentials Classic. Next thing I want to mention, and this is extremely important, especially for this exercise, is that we're using smart guides to activate smart guides. All you need to do is go to view, select smart guides, or control U. Now, with that being said, we're building this piece on a PC. So anytime we make hotkey or key command recommendations using the control key, if you're using an Apple or Mac device, select the command key instead. Again, command equals control. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our type tool. Let's click anywhere on our artboard. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and type the letter M. Next, we'll select our letter M either by double clicking on our type or hitting Control A. Before we do anything, let's talk about isometric type. Isometric type works best with a bold sans serif. Some of the best types to use are thick and geometric types like Franklin Gothic, Futura, Arial, and Helvetica. In this case, we're going to be using Indigo Regular. Now, if you don't have that typeface, and odds are you might not, all you need to do to find it is to go to fontsquirrel.com and do a search for Indigo. Beyond that, just click on the link below. Once we've switched over to Indigo, let's increase our type size from 12, or whatever our default is, to 200 points. Then let's grab our selection tool and deselect our type. That's the type we're going to be working with. We're going to make a few simple changes to it, and then we'll have our isometric type. First thing we're going to do is let's select this and drag this somewhere near the center of our artboard. That looks pretty good right there. Next thing I'm going to do is let's open up our transform window. All you need to do that is go to Window, Transform, or select Shift F8. Once we're here, let's start transforming our type. Now this first measurement comes from our friend Dansky. If you don't know who Dansky is, do a YouTube search for him. He is a master at Illustrator tutorials. Now that we've got that done, let's select our type and let's enter the following dimensions. Again, this came from Dansky, 86.602%. Let's hit enter. And you'll notice it squishes down just a little bit. This lends to the isometric look. Next thing we're going to do is let's go down to our shear window, and let's enter negative 30. Hit enter. You can see how that shear is just a little bit right there. Next thing we're going to do, let's go to our angle, and let's enter 30 degrees right there. Hit enter. And let's go ahead and deselect. Now that right there is the isometric angle that we are looking for. All right, next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and select our typeface, and let's go ahead and create outlines. We can do this a couple of ways. The first way is to go to object, expand. And the second way is to right click on our typeface, scroll down and select create outlines. Alternatively, you can select shift control L. Notice what that does straight away is it converts our type from editable type to an editable shape. And right, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and switch our shape fill and stroke from black to white with a black stroke, just like that. Let's go ahead and double click on our black stroke and make sure it is full black. It's not quite there. So what we'll do is we'll drag down to the bottom left corner. Let's click OK. Now that we've got that, we want to make a copy of our type. 
and just drag it down just a little bit below our original shape. How do we do that? Piece of cake. Let's keep our piece selected or let's reselect our piece if needed. Let's go to Edit, Copy or Control C, and then let's select Edit one more time and select Paste in back or, of course, Control B. Let's hold our Shift key and use our directional keys to arrow down just a little bit. Looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. And those right there are our start and end shapes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our pen tool and connect all of the relevant anchor points. Check out how we do this. First thing we're going to do is let's go to outlines by hitting control Y. And then let's go ahead and grab our pen tool. Let's zoom in on our shape just a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. Next, what we're going to do, and again, we want to make sure our shapes are not selected, is let's hover over our shape and then just connect the corresponding anchor points. Once they're connected, we can press the escape key to escape our pen line, and then we can just go to our next set of anchor points. Let's continue. Again, we'll press the escape key, and let's keep going. All right, there you go. Let's go ahead and escape outlines for just a sec to take a look at what this piece looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to create individual shapes out of all our line shapes and connected shapes. To do this, we're going to be using our Shape Builder tool, and you can see how it works. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our Selection tool. Let's click and drag across our entire shape just like that. And then let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool. Now note, as we drag across our piece, that various elements activate. That means if we click, drag, and release across our shapes, just like we do here, that's going to take all those individual shapes and lines and to make them a single shape. Let's go ahead and do that for the rest of our piece again. We'll click, drag, and release. Looks pretty good right there. Let's work on the top of our shape. Let's click, drag all through our shape, and we'll release. That looks pretty good right there, and let's continue. If there's a single shape that doesn't connect to anything else, click on that as well, and then let's continue. Click, drag, and release. Click, drag, and release. Click, drag, and release, and click, drag, and release, just like that. Now, before you finish, it's always worthwhile to take a close-up look of your piece, see if you might have missed anything or not shape-built with all your shapes. Let's zoom in. Notice right here, there's a piece that's missing. Looks good right there. Let's go ahead and zoom in right here and let's connect those pieces as well. All right, let's bring the entire page into view by hitting Control Zero. Let's grab our selection tool and deselect and let's escape outlines. Now, there you go. Now that we've got our isometric piece, let's go ahead and color this out and finish out our build. First thing we're going to do, let's drag across our entire shape and let's select the color that we want to play with for our entire shape. I want to do a dark magenta for most of my piece. So what I'm going to do is I'll double click on my fill. Let's go over here to our color build. We'll drag over magenta right there, hit 100% and then we'll tab down to black. We'll add a little bit of black to it. Let's take that to 30% and let's click OK. Deselect our shape. It looks pretty good right there, but I want my top to be just 100% magenta, no black. So let's select our top. We'll double click on our fill and let's bring all our colors back to just magenta. And once we've got that, let's click OK. Deselect our shape. And those are the colors that we want to use. That looks really good. Now let's go ahead and enhance our piece just a little bit by increasing our strokes. How are we going to do that? Once again, let's drag across our entire shape here, and then let's go ahead and open up our stroke window. We can do that a couple ways. If you're using Essentials Classic, all you need to do is click on your stroke tool right there, and it'll come up. Alternatively, you can go to Window, Stroke, or Control F10. Now, once this is open, let's go ahead and increase our stroke from one point to five points.
and let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Now take a look at our shape, especially if we zoom in just a little bit. We do that by hitting Control Plus. You'll notice that some of our stroke corners have overlapped the outside of others. It does not lend to a clean look. That's easy to fix. All we need to do is click and drag across our shape one more time. With our stroke window open, all you need to do is go down to corner and select round joint. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape one more time. Let's bring our entire page of view. That's a piece of cake. That looks easy and done. All you need to do is add some isometric type, center it, and perhaps even make your screen black. And with that, we are done. A piece of cake making those isometric lines for a shape with hard edges like the aforementioned M. But what about something with round edges? Well, in this case, we're going to be using a P. This is easy too. Let's go ahead and zoom in and check it out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up our rulers. All you need to do to do that is, of course, go to View, Rulers, and Show Rulers. Additionally, you could press Control R and notice the rulers are in place. Next thing you're going to do is with your selection tool, click and drag your ruler out and just drag it over so that it intersects with your P edges just like that. Once you've got that, grab your pen tool and then just connect the lines from there. Once again, click and release. Go ahead and deselect. And then from there, all you need to do is connect all the rest of your lines. Piece of cake, check it out. Once we've got that, we can go hide our rulers. All we need to do to do that is press control semicolon. After that's done, piece of cake. All we need to do is go to outlines, build our shapes, make our lines, add our color, and do whatever else we need to get done. And we've got a radical piece on our hands. Now that we've got both of those types of shapes done, I can say it officially, we are done. Well done. Now use these tools to level up your own logo designs. Maybe I need to do that myself. Now, with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.